Hello everyone. Let's talk about chromatography and direction of DNA polymerase. The DNA polymerase moves from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. But have you ever wondered how this discovery was made? Well, it was the Nobel Prize winner Arthur Kornberg who designed a brilliant experiment in mid-1950s to find the direction of DNA polymerase. When Arthur Kornberg discovered DNA polymerase while characterizing the enzyme, he asked an important question. The question was, what is the direction of DNA polymerase? Is it from 5' prime to 3' prime, or is it from 3' prime to 5'? Prime? To answer this question, he designed a brilliant experiment. He took DNA along with DNA polymerase 1 and P32 labeled nucleotide. Now remember, DNA polymerase 1 is the enzyme that is involved in DNA repair. Its function is to repair broken pieces of DNA. The other two polymerase, Pol2 and Pol3, were discovered several years later after the discovery of polymerase 1. So, coming back to our experiment, the DNA was taken, it was mixed with polymerase 1 and out of 4, any one nucleotide, let us say cytosine, was added to this mixture. This cytosine was labeled with P32. Now remember, when DNA is isolated because of vigorous mixing, pipetting and rough handling, the DNA gets damaged. The polymerase 1 in the mixture will try to repair the broken pieces of DNA. So, the DNA polymerase 1 will try to repair all these broken parts. Now, since we have P32 labeled cytosine, the DNA polymerase will add cytosine if it finds guanine in the complementary strand. So, cytosine will be added over here, it will be added over here and over here. At other locations where guanine is absent, the polymerase will keep on waiting for the complementary nucleotide. But since other nucleotides are absent, nothing will be added here. Once cytosine is allowed to be added, the DNA is hydrolyzed. The DNA hydrolysis results in formation of mononucleotides, dinucleotides, trinucleotides and oligonucleotides. All these can be separated using ion exchange chromatography. So during ion exchange chromatography, when you collect fractions, you can elute out mononucleotides, dinucleotides, trinucleotides and oligonucleotides. During the experiment, author Kornberg collected dinucleotides that were radio-labeled. Okay, so there are two possibilities. Possibility 1, the direction of DNA polymerase is from 5' prime to 3'. prime. In this case, the hydroxyl group will lose its H plus ion and become an oxy anion. This oxy anion will react with the phosphate and form a phosphodiester bond. In possibility 2, the hydroxyl group which is with the nucleotide will react with the 5' prime phosphate and form phosphodiester bond. Now, after this reaction, the DNA was hydrolyzed. So, when the DNA was hydrolyzed, this whole portion will be gone. Now, let us say the nucleotide adjacent to cytosine is N. Your N can be any nucleotide out of 4. 
Now, the dinucleotides were isolated by ion exchange chromatography and Arthur Kornberg selected dinucleotides that were radio-labeled. Now, let me just rearrange this to make things even more clear. So, in the next step, he used an enzyme which cuts this particular bond, the bond between sugar and the phosphate. So, now if you see this carefully, if the direction was from 5' prime to 3', prime, then the labeled phosphate is getting transferred to the adjacent nucleotide. The labeled phosphate is no more with cytosine. And coming to second possibility, if the direction was from 3' prime to 5', prime, then the enzyme will break this bond between sugar and phosphate. In this case, the labeled phosphate is still with cytosine. So now the question is, how do you find where the radiolabeled phosphate is? To find this, after enzymatic treatment, the nucleotides were separated by paper chromatography and analyzed by autoradiography. The paper chromatography will separate all the nucleotides A, T, G and C and autoradiography will tell you which nucleotide has the labeled phosphate. If the phosphate gets transferred to the adjacent nucleotide which can be any nucleotide then the direction will be from 5' prime to 3' prime. and if the label phosphate still remains with cytosine then the direction will be from 3' prime to 5' prime. So when Arthur Kornberg did this experiment he found that the labeled phosphate was getting transferred to the adjacent nucleotide and so the direction of DNA polymerase was from 5' prime to 3' prime. So as you can see just by using simple techniques like ion exchange chromatography, paper chromatography and autoradiography it was possible to find the direction of DNA polymerase.